We're joined by Rich Anderson from BASF, and Rich, you just finished a presentation on preaxle, new fungicide, corn and soybeans. Growers obviously very familiar with headline. Tell us what preaxle brings to the marketplace. Excellent. Well, Preax was a brand new fungicide registered for 2014 by BASF, uh, registered in both corn and, and soybeans. Uh, and basically what it is, is it's a double mode of action product. So it does have headline, which growers are very familiar with, in the product. And it's the full active ingredient load that you'd be used to uh, from previous years of using headline. But it has a brand new product called Xenium. Now, Xenium is a different mode of action. It's a group 7. So you have a group 11 and a group 7 in there, which differs a little bit from some other offers in the marketplace. It's actually one of the first group 7s available to work in corn and soybeans soybeans here in Ontario. Uh, it is something with the Group 7 has a lot of different modes or different traits to it. Uh, one thing definitely is it does overlap in all the major diseases that Headline would control, uh, giving you another mode of action uh, to, to work on it. But the, the real nice thing about Xemium is, is how it moves inside the plant and what it actually does. Now Xemium is something that when it is applied to a, to a soybean or corn plant, uh, it locks itself very tightly into the waxy layer. Uh, and then it actually meters itself out kind of slowly throughout its, its life cycle inside the plant. Now the average fungicide lasts two to three weeks long. Uh, Zemium will last the same amount of time, but what it will actually do is when it locks itself into the waxy layer and meters itself out slowly, uh, it actually later on into the life cycle of a fungicide being two to three weeks at the end, uh, there'll actually be more active ingredient there. Uh, some of our trials have shown after 10 days, there's still 43% of the actual Zemium still locked into the waxy layer that allows it to come out later. This causes the, the Zemia to be much more consistent uh, than Headline and other products in the marketplace because uh, it does give you a fuller spectrum of control for, for longer. Yeah. No, I mean, you even had some yield results here and mm -hmm. some, some bottom lines. And yeah. uh, it looked like you were basically getting about two extra bushels with Praxor, right? Uh, we're seeing about a bushel more in corn, a bushel more in soybeans uh, mm -hmm. as a general rule. Uh, and it is, it can be much higher, it can be in different situations. Uh, the one nice thing about the Zemium uh, added to the headline in the Praxor product, it seems to be much more consistent than headline alone. In a lot of cases, we had headline in the same field as Praxor. Praxor was able to give a, uh, an economic return to the grower in the field where headline might not of in that case, but it always seems to be doing better and more consistent what Headline was able to bring, and that's because it has, does have the two modes of action. Let's talk a little bit about soybeans for okay. a second. Sure. Um, I was interested, I heard Dr. David Hooker yes. talk about Preaxor. Um, you know, he's done a lot of work on fungicides try, and trying to fit where, see where they fit and the value and return on investment. And he he's very pleased with what he's seen with Preaxor. Yes, actually the plots we had last year turned out extremely well. Uh, it is something we worked very closely with them on and, and we're able to get the, the timing right one. Uh, the headline in soybeans and Preaxor and soybeans really need to be on the R2.5 time frame, which is just a few small pods on the very bottom of the plant. Um, and at that time, and Preaxor performed very well on his plots. Uh, it was something that did better than Headline and did better than the untreated check for sure, and, and was one of the more consistent uh, returns that he's ever had in one of his, his plots. And you, you said in your presentation, it's really about more pods per plant, right? Yeah, that's what we're trying to get. Uh, one pod uh, on uh, with three beans in it, across 180 plants per acre, uh, will actually give you four bushels. A couple of things. Um, you talked about obviously on the yield results, you're probably getting a little bit more consistent performance at, that, at those lower yield potential, mm -hmm. you know, uh, fields. Yeah, in, in fields where growers have tried a, a fungicide in the past and, and may not have seen the results that they're looking for, uh, Preaxor actually is something that works a lot better in, in fields where other fungicides can't do the job. Uh, it is something that's far more consistent in what it does in terms of returns and in comparisons even to headline, it does do better. Uh, and it is something that uh, we highly encourage guys that have never used a fungicide before or have have used it and haven't got the, re the results they're looking for. Uh, look at the timing, trying to get it on at the, at the proper timing, which is one or two pods an inch long as your target, uh, using the Preaxor product, which is, is, is more consistent and will give a better yield return uh, as an opportunity to really look at that, that whole technology of spraying soybeans again. Mm -hmm. A couple of quick questions, things that you, Go ahead. you touched on. Um, First year, no IP, stay away from IPs. It is something that, uh, it is registered for all soybean types, uh, but it is something as we, we go ahead and work with our partners in Japan, uh, they want another year to look at the product before they bring it in for, for food grade soybeans only. So these are the ones that are contracted to Japan and, and are set up that way. So those ones there, uh, to, to abide with what they're looking for, we like to you guys, like growers not to apply to IPs the first year, we're gonna be targeting Roundup Readies or, or non-GMOs. 
a little later in harvest because those plants yes. are healthy and they stay green. Yes, there is a stay green effect to, to fungicides. Uh, with the headline and with the uh, with the preaxial, we do see a leaf retention. So leaves stay on a little bit longer, uh, but this allows the plant to capture more sunlight and more carbohydrates. And we actually get a bigger bean out of this and more 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 weight, which gives you more yield. Uh, we usually do see a harvest delay. Uh, it can be two to three days on an average, uh, but and you will. And not every field does keep the leaves on, but uh, when it does, we we see some pretty good results. Yeah, and a big issue this year past mm -hmm. white mold. You've got yes. some white mold suppression here. This is something that's brand new with the Zemium product. It actually does have some white mold suppression. Now it is suppression, just slows it down. Uh, but it is something, and compared to other products which are out there in the strobe urine family, which, are, which does have some, some white mold suppression, will have very similar amounts of, uh, of suppression to help out with white mold problems. Uh, for control though, still the best thing is planting wider rows, rotating, and other, other um, cultural practices. But in terms of a fungicide, it does provide a slight benefit of reducing white mold. Hey, and a final thing, cost. You mentioned yes, obviously um, we've got some benefits over fungus, uh, sorry, over uh, headline. Yes. But a couple of dollars cheaper. It's actually when it comes out to it, like headline is $18 suggested retail this year. Preaxor is $16 suggested retail. Uh, we do have a rebate program through our grower program. Uh, it, it does reduce the cost of headline by $1.40. So there is a, a 60 cent saving going with the Preaxor. But basically with the Preaxor, you're getting the full rate of headline plus the Zemium. Uh, and it is a generation two fungicide, which is something brand new and, and coming to the marketplace. And we're very, very excited about. And uh, it is something that's coming out to be a more cost effective for the growers out there because it gives a chance for them to try something out and really really see what it can do for them on their farm. One final thing, yes, you, we talked about rates and you mm -hmm. said hey Spray it like you're spraying for aphids. Yeah, if you are going in to, to get the penetration into the canopy, what I want growers to do is to try and aim for the bottom half of the plant. So you're trying to spray as though you're spraying for aphids. Uh, my recommendation to most growers is that 15 to 18 gallons, 20 is, is also a good one to work with. Uh, you want to penetrate the, the canopy quite deeply with heavy, big droplets. Uh, headline and preax, or, or sorry, headline and zemium, both move from the base of the plant, the base of the leaf to the tip, and then move to the other side of the leaf on their own. So big, large droplets penetrating deep into the canopy will strike the leaf and shatter and move around the plant and give you complete coverage. Uh, so you really want to force it down into the canopy with high pressures and uh, I, I do prefer 15 to 18 gallons. Awesome. Hey Rich, thank you for your insights and uh, lots of great tips for growers using this product this summer. Excellent, thank you very much.